Hello and welcome to Living Life. It is October the 4th, 2014 and it is my joy and pleasure to share with you the Word of God today. It is hard to believe that we're already in October and that Christmas is now just around the corner. This month we have started a new series on the book of Ecclesiastes and today we are in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 12 to 26. Have you ever experienced a day when you've just woken up and you've thought to yourself, what's the point? What's the point of getting out of bed? It's going to be the same day, the same thing as yesterday, and the same thing as tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the same, the next day will be the same, and 20 years down the track, the same toil, an endless cycle of brushing your teeth, getting up out of bed, eating and work. What's the point? What's it all for? What's the point of life. It's so easy to get discouraged and demotivated at times in life because the truth is a lot of what we do in life is repetitive and at times mundane. Solomon today in our passage is having one of those days. Maybe he's coming to the end of his life. Maybe he's sensing his own mortality. But today once again we see that he questions the purpose of his life and the place where he can truly find joy and satisfaction. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 12 through 26 Then I turned my thoughts to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise man has eyes in his head, while the fool walks in the darkness. But I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Then I thought in my heart, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said in my heart, This too is meaningless. For the wise man, like the fool, will not be long remembered. In days to come, both will be forgotten. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. So I hated life, because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is meaningless a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool, yet he will have control over all the work into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a man may do his work with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then he must leave all he owns to someone who has not worked for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What does a man get for all the toil and anxious striving with which he labors under the sun? All his days his work is pain and grief. Even at night his mind does not rest. This too is meaningless. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge and happiness. But to the sinner he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. In Ecclesiastes so far, we see Solomon, and this is King Solomon. He is the richest, most powerful dude in all of ancient Israel. His conclusion so far in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and 2, he sees that life is meaningless, that wisdom is meaningless, that even pleasures are meaningless. 
And now we come to the place where he looks back upon all his life achievement, all the toil and work he has done, and he realizes that that too is ultimately meaningless. We begin with Solomon airing out his grievances and his melancholy. And it's pretty amazing. Maybe it's his mortality. Maybe he's at the end of his life. And as he looks back at his life, as he looks back at all the accomplishments, all the achievements, all the prestige and honor that he has won, as he looks back at his kingdom, all the work, all the thriving work that he has done, in light of eternity, as death draws near, he realizes that he can't take this into eternity. That all his work, he can't take into the next life. That ultimately, it's meaningless. All his hard work comes to nothing, to hand over to someone else who can ruin or prosper. So what then is the meaning of life? What then is the true purpose? What then is the joy that we must live our life with? The true message of this book is that enjoyment is a gift of God. There is nothing in possessions, in material goods, in money. There is nothing in people themselves that can enable them to keep enjoying the things they do. But it is possible to have enjoyment all your life if you take it from the hand of God. It is given to those who please God. Wisdom and knowledge have been mentioned before as things you can get from under the sun. But they even they will not continue. To have added to them the ingredient of pleasure, of continual delight, unceasing throughout the whole of life, you must take it from the hand of God. The person who pleases God is given the gift of joy. It is wonderful to realize that this book teaches us that God wants us, He wants His people to have joy. In his first letter to Timothy, Paul, the Apostle Paul said, He richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. 1 Timothy 6.17 It is God's desire and intent that all good things of life that are mentioned here should contribute to people's enjoyment. But only says the author, if you understand that enjoyment, that true enjoyment does not come from things or from people, It is an added gift of God and only those who please God can find it. So how do you please God? In many places in scripture we are told that without faith it is impossible to please God. It is faith that pleases him, belief that he is there and that everything in life comes from his hands, that he is the provider. Underscore in your minds the word all This means literally all the pain, the sorrow, the the bereavement, the disappointments, as well as gladness, happiness and joy. All these things are gifts of God. When we see life in those terms, any and every element of life can have its measure of joy. Even sorrow, even pain and grief. These things were given to us to enjoy. This is also the message of Romans 8:28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It is also the message of Proverbs 3, 5, 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Truly, the good God, the good Father, He gives all things from His hands. And when we see that, even the hardest trials can become a source of joy. We know that the ultimate joy God has sent in His Son, Jesus Christ. And He has sent His Son so that that joy will be in us forever. So Solomon today, by the end of chapter 2, has come to that realization, that revelation that life 
is meaningless. That even wisdom, and this guy is the wisest of everyone in this whole world, is meaningless. That even the pleasures, and this guy, he's the king, he had power, he had prestige, he had it all. That all the pleasures of this world are meaningless. And now, that even his work, his toil, even his kingdom, his lifelong work and achievements, even that too is meaningless. Why? Because in eternity, they mean nothing. They cannot be taken into the next world. And so what is life all about? Where can we find true joy? True joy comes from God. It comes from believing in Him. It comes from having faith in Him. It comes from acknowledging that everything that we have and everything that we are, that even the sadness and the sorrow and the toils, as long as as well with the joys and the happiness, all come from Him. When we acknowledge that He is God, we can truly have joy in life. So let me ask you as we close, do you live each day as grateful receivers, acknowledging that every good gift is God's provision? Have we seen His intent for joy in all that we experience each and every day of our lives. God longs for your joy, but that joy comes when you draw close to Him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you are the giver of life, that our life's purpose, that our life's meaning comes from you. And so Lord, we want to hide ourselves in you. We want to turn our eyes, our gaze from the works that we do, from the toil that we do, from the achievements that we hold in esteem. And Lord, we want to find joy, refuge and satisfaction in you and you alone. So Lord, may you continue to draw us close to you, fill us with your spirit and help us in every situation of life to see that it all comes from you the hardships, the sorrow, the grief, with the joy, the gladness, the happy times, the gifts. So Lord, we thank you so much that you love us and that you long for our joy. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.